Yeah, Surabhi. Uh, yes, good evening. I think. Uh, Uh, 6.32 let us just get going but before uh, joy starting off I think you can see some new faces today and these new faces are the research buddies who are going to be with us so uh, I think we'll need uh, one more round of introductions again, so that everyone knows everyone. Uh, so maybe we should start on that, uh, which will be good for all of us. Uh, but only thing I want to suggest here is that, so when you are uh, introducing yourself, uh, so participants can talk about their research idea in in like an elevator pitch format, right? So everyone knows what, what is elevator pitch. Elevator pitch is exactly the time required from one floor to another floor in an elevator. Yeah, we are not talking about like Burj Khalifa or something like that, but maybe an average building. So, uh, so you can take that time and then uh, explain uh, what is the idea that you are working on? And for the buddies, my suggestion is you can talk about the uh, topics or domains you have already worked in and you would be passionate about. So, so that it will be easy for uh, the participants to, to know you in what context should they uh, talk to you or <laughs> approach you. So this has nothing to do with your formal introduction about uh, what you teach or what you work at and all those things. That is essential, but uh, that is required, but not essential. So what you work on or what you have published on or what you probably can publish on these topics are most important as of now. Okay. It can be also like uh, not just topics, but it could be research methods that you are passionate about. It could be about a particular uh, literature that you have studied in detail. So it should be something that you can offer as a buddy to any participant who is trying to catch up with you. So that's that's your pitch. And for participants, your introduction should include a very short, like two liner idea that, okay, this is what excites me and I am somewhere near for that. So I think I am clear about, I would just give you a example of how I would pitch as a participant, as well as how I would pitch myself as a buddy. And maybe that would clear up things. Uh, or you want to just get started immediately. You can you can post a chat message on chat. So you can first start. You can show us a demo. You can show us a demo and then we can copy okay. you. We can imitate you. Okay. So you want a demo first. Okay. So let's see. Uh, so supposing I am a participant and so I am just going to say that, uh, hi, I'm Samir and right now I am working on a web-based application of uh, explaining or rather busting myths about menstrual hygiene using a gamified uh, question answer memory game uh, on a mobile app. I want to study the uh, the engagement and the learning which can be transferred by playing this game or gamified app that is uh, i am looking for a paper there that would be my pitch as a participant as a research buddy i would 
I would introduce myself something like this. I am Samir. I have worked in the areas mostly related to visual design. So my forte is not quantitative research, but I work mostly on qualitative research and based on interviews, ethnographic studies and observations. So my ideas would be how people interact with computers, how they uh, gather information through interaction. And this is what excites me the most. Okay. So is that uh, good enough for all of you to get the point? Yes, sir. Okay. Now let's go ahead. So let's start with uh, participants, maybe, or you, the research buddies wants to go first. Uh, can I start? Good, good. Vimlesh, go ahead. Yeah, I, my name is Vimlesh Kubudesai. Uh, well, uh, uh, I've been in academics for almost more than 10, 10 years, a decade. Prior to that, I was in industry for almost two decades. So I'm with a call, uh, institute called NICMA, National Institute for Construction Management and Research. I worked as a, as a senior associate professor. And uh, my, my interest in this um, educational technology primarily comes from the fact that you know, I enjoy uh, imparting knowledge, uh, building learning capability among the students. So I try on my own different ways of developing interest among the students. My background is I'm an engineer by profession, by, by uh, basic education, thereafter I have done my MBA. And most of the time I work in infrastructure sector. So as far as education technology goes, I have never been a part of it. We'll see, technically speaking, but it is my uh, dear interest that has made me involved in this education technology field. So I read and I experiment on my own various things. So that's it from my side. Sir, you're muted. Yeah, so we see Anupriya raising a hand. So Anupriya, go ahead. Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Anupriya. And uh, my idea of research topic is blended learning. And uh, currently I'm working on this also, that is blended learning using MOOCs. And I want to uh, basically, um, in my university, that is, that is in graphic era, uh, that is in Dehradun. So I, we have designed one model and we are implementing it from last 2000, like uh, from the last seven years and uh, from like 2015 so and uh, currently i'm working on that model but i want to uh, work on the blended learning using MOOCs or any type of like not MOOCs only uh, basically blended learning and its impact on academic performance of the students so uh, yes sir that's the question do you mean to say blended learning using online uh, online teaching learning right so yes, sir, yeah. online as well as uh, traditional also so the i just to understand what is the blend you are talking about blend is about uh, adding online uh, yes. to face to face courses is yes, that sir. yes sir. along with the traditional uh, classroom we are adding a blended learning course uh, we are adding the online courses also got, as got a it. part of curriculum is it like two courses in online mode and three courses in face-to-face -face mode? Yes, or it is within yes, the single yes. course, 20 lectures in online mode and 10 lectures in face-to-face -face mode? Uh, yes, sir. Actually, blended can be anything, but we have implemented three type. Uh, in my I have implemented three models here okay. in the graphic era, okay. in which like no, no. Uh, so we will get a chance to explain the model later on. Okay. No, 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 no. I'm not explaining. I just want to. Um, I'm just searching and like uh, want to uh, as a research buddy in which we can calculate the yeah uh, we can uh, connect it with the academic performance of the students because okay. everybody is talking about MOOC everybody is talking about blended learning and uh, there are so many learning platforms but nobody is talking about how it is impacting on the students nobody is calculating that 
it is only from the instructor side that my course is uh, like in my course students are performing well so we want to uh, explore that in which we can calculate it the pattern of students selecting the courses not it not it not it okay so we are using this elevator pitches for a building which is bigger than burj khalifa now because it also takes <laughs> somewhere little than what what we are okay let us uh, okay so this is only the initial page we will get lot of chance actually as i realize we may get actually uh, not may we will certainly go beyond uh, uh, this broad all in one wala meetings because we will now have many one on one meetings and that's what uh, we aim at but yeah i think we should be um, using this opportunity to introduce ourselves just to excite uh, uh the interest of uh, people around us okay so anyone next to raise a hand surbi yeah go ahead surbi good evening sir uh, i am surbi uh, from uh, lucknow department of education university of lucknow and my idea is to uh, study the attitude of the budding scholars towards the uh, development of e content and uh, why i am i am interested in this idea or uh, i have chosen it because an ep talks about uh, creation and curation of e contents and uh, at my university i have found that uh, we are implementing in our uh, curriculum that uh, we have to design a small e content but uh, the attitude was not very positive so i thought we must study in detail what are the problems and challenges one is facing as a teacher educator or in teacher education institutions that uh, they are not uh, willing to create uh, e contents so that is what uh, i am trying to study and proposing my idea for thank you sir yeah thanks this is quite apt thank you sir okay so you had a building of bombay stock exchange probably so that was good okay let's go <laughs> let's go ahead yeah you guys can just keep raising hand said then okay nisumba yeah go ahead uh hello everyone i am anushumba sudarni from et department in iit bombay i am a second year phd research scholar uh, who is more uh, involved to work in maker spaces self motivational beliefs etc and i am also open to explore different things thank you yeah any any particular study that you can just uh, uh, you can tell us about uh study is what i have done yeah yeah any study that you have done uh in my uh, first semester there was a course called human computer interaction where uh, as a group we developed uh, uh, sign language material and picture book which was tested with uh, deaf and hard of hearing students it was uh, the user group were deaf and hard of hearing students we used okay. nasa to what like was your what was your result on that so we use nasa tlx to understand whether they are uh, comfortable or uh, do they like this better than the conventional method of teaching which involved uh, lip reading so the overall response was like uh, they were uh, comfortable and they wanted more materials like this okay. thank you thank you yeah sumitra Uh, yeah, I am yeah, third year research scholar in uh, IIT Bombay. So my research area is uh, uh, student question driven learning, and uh, I am working on qualitative and quantitative uh, data analysis method. And uh, I am interested to know how students learn. Uh, and uh, apart from that i am also assistant professor in the uh, one of the engineering college in mumbai so that's all about me so any any results of uh, any re recent study that you you want to tell us like 
you can directly tell us the result also doesn't matter yeah we have uh, we are actually interested we are working on uh, student uh, uh, driven learning so based on that we are uh, finding out how much uh, student centric learning is possible in a uh, classroom like in today's engineering classroom so we are measuring how much agentic learning agentic learner the students can be arjun go ahead uh hi everyone uh, i am arjun prasad i am currently doing my first year phd at the education technology department iit bombay um uh, my broad area of research is in uh, education technology policy implementation but i am very much interested in learning how uh, new technologies like vr and ar impact student learning especially how the students perception of the user use of ar and vr technologies okay. any uh, any results in this area that you have uh not exactly in this um so as part of uh, some of the course works we have uh, worked as a group in developing uh, a, an app um basically to uh, for the dhs uh, students uh, which help them in language you are not testing uh um we have actually it was a, a like um it's not a full uh, fully uh, developed one we have just uh, tried it with uh, some of the students but uh, not a full free, fully fleshed one yeah okay thanks ulfa Uh, hi uh, i am ulfa khwaja i am currently in the last year of my phd program at et in at uh, iit bombay so i was just listening to you all and going through a few of the ideas that were shared by the participants so in lines with a few i will just speak about a few projects that i worked in the past one is uh, a sanskrit game based learning tool which was known as katharan and that was not part of our et department but uh, i participated in the hackathon uh, with few other students of you and that's how we designed a um, uh, tool for, to teach sanskrit uh, to kids then um, also in the past i've worked on ar tools to teach uh, geometry solids to middle school students and that's part of our uh, department works it's known as geo solver you can see it on the website as well and my phd thesis is focused on uh, collaboration around a uh, tel environment to learn estimation thinking skills engineering estimation thinking skills so my focus is on the mechanisms by which learners uh, collaborate uh, while using a tool and how they how that impacts their estimation problem solving skills yes okay so interesting so does does it also apply to uh, teachers collaborating while solving something like this <laughs> uh, as of now i have not uh, looked at the teacher part of it like mine is uh, totally focusing on uh, novice learners because yeah. uh, no, generally just, this kind of skills uh, yeah is not taught in your curriculum and but is essential in uh, industry experts like teachers and all they anyways use this skill so my focus is on students yeah yeah i'm just joking because <laughs> yeah 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 got it so many teachers together and we are going to see if we can if we can do something here and let's see actually we will have the proof of the pudding immediately because if we come out with papers probably yeah we are successful yeah. in this and let's see uh, any any particular result that you want to just quote in one line about what what was your one of the results of uh, this collaboration between students so um, i initially started with a broad outlook you know just trying to understand uh, how they collaborate how do they talk how do they build knowledge and what striking uh, result i got in my experiments was that i saw a lot of instances of negotiation between learners so how uh, this plays this is a uh, like negotiation was one of the prominent mechanism in uh, collaboration that i noticed and then i went around to see okay how this impacts while they're negotiating the learners tend to justify give evidence clarify critique so in that process a lot of their thinking uh, uh, you know is uh kind of uh, brought out to for us to actually understand how they are uh, going about solving so this was one of the major uh, results that i got in my studies okay 
Yes, thanks, Ulfa. Yeah. So, announcement in between before Saurabh goes on. Uh, I can see because videos are off. Uh, I can see uh, Nandan putting up uh, some notes in between. So, uh, yeah, uh, that gave me idea that there could be a pop up quiz in between sometime about what you heard so far. So <laughs> you be ready about <laughs> what. <laughs> Uh, who is doing what kind of question probably <laughs> but uh, the idea is that you make notes of uh, people you can in fact uh, like i have worked in the past all the time it doesn't have to be restricted to the t4e paper writing exercise it, this is a community that we are creating here which can interact irrespective of this uh, t4e as a conference uh, submission so if we really find out good synergies between like what Ulfa was saying uh, and uh, I was reiterating that, that if we actually can find out synergies between the people here, it should be uh, kind of very productive interaction because the community is not so big in edtech uh, research. So if we find people who are working in similar domains and uh, are working on some ideas which excite us, then uh, we should take this as an opportunity to interact with them uh, separately and uh, maybe collaborate and come up with uh, some good things. So I think that would that is uh, maybe uh, a hidden agenda of this activity. Uh, and T4E conference just becomes one platform to showcase that. Uh, but uh, I my uh, focus always has been community building about uh, such like-minded people so yes please please keep an eye so yeah pop-up quiz was just just a uh, just an idea to tell you that okay you should be open to all the comments which are being made right now and make make real notes about it like notes as in not written thing but you should be able to figure out uh, uh, who is working in what area at that time okay go ahead Saurabh and followed by uh, Ganesh and then Veena yeah, very good evening, one and all. Uh, good evening, uh, Samir sir. Good to see you after a long time. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, I am Saurabh Mehta. I'm working as a faculty in one of the private colleges in Mumbai. So, my basically interest is into MOOC development and uh, different uh, implementation of different pedagogy, even uh, lab development, open lab development, and virtual lab development. So, I've been involved in developing uh, many MOOC courses, uh, instruction design courses and instruction design material uh, from right from 2016 onwards and uh, practically we have implemented at our college. So what are different challenges and different kind of like, you know, uh, uh, problems that we are facing. So always working on that thing. So I can bring that kind of like uh, insight for the participant and uh, also in a way, I can learn uh, from other researcher. That's all. Thank you. Great. I like the last line. Uh, okay, great. Go ahead, Ganesh. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. Uh, my name is Ganesh Lokhande. I'm an instruction designer and e-learning developer. I have some experience of working in the industry as well as academics. Uh, currently, I'm doing uh, my PhD, uh, and uh, as part of my PhD research, I have developed a tool for teachers to write their uh, LED scripts or the video scripts. And uh, I am looking forward to this group to guide me in my research. You want to outsource your PhD to the group? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, okay. <laughs> Fine. Okay. Abina, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Uh, I am, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Bina from uh, SDMB Vaishnam College, Tamil Nadu. Um, sir, uh, it's very nice to listen to all the young researchers. I've been teaching English uh, college level, sir. And when you look at our colleges, like most of the kids are from uh, first generation. So it's always very difficult to teach them English. So I've been using WhatsApp as a classroom, especially during this COVID time. I taught them English using WhatsApp as a classroom through which I really taught them how to develop their communicative skills. And you've been asking about the result. It was really amazing. 
and I'm writing a paper. When I started, it was around it's 50 students could be accommodated uh, uh, into each group. So the result was really uh, effective. And then I've been using AR, VR, because I'm not good at technology, but I've used this Google Arts and Culture uh, platform in the classroom to make students to write their ideas. So a bit of uh, Arlupa is, 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 is an app through which I really create uh, a AR's sort of uh, uh, picture. And I'll ask my kids to write about it. So these are the things we've been doing and been using QR as a as, as a method to uh, make them interesting, sir. So I really want to uh, you know, use technology to teach English as a second language to my students who are basically from, uh, you know, uh, I mean, uh, socially weaker section uh, students. Sir. So this is, this, this is my idea and if I find uh, a buddy, it is like, uh, it will be really helpful for me. Yeah, thank you sir. Yeah, one, one question, what is one? Yes sir. Hello? You're muted. Oh, sorry. What is one striking result that came across uh, after you conducted the WhatsApp classroom? Sir, actually in person they had, they were in jitters when they wanted to speak something and again I never looked into the grammatical aspects of my students and uh, when it is, uh, when it was online they could and I would ask them to record their voice or record their story or sometimes I would ask them to send the video. It was really amazing because the confidence level was really high when they wanted to record their proceedings or their story or narration. So that was the result I could really, uh, uh, know, um, it's like I, I got that as, as, as a effective result, sir. So it was good. Uh, the result was really effective because students gain confidence when we've been asking to do something on their own. Instead of asking them to do it in the classroom, um, uh, so it was like, because they studied in their vernacular medium, sir. So I felt it was really effective. And when I met them in person after uh, uh, this pandemic, I could find that, you uh, know, positive change in them. Right. Okay. Yes, sir. So one immediate feedback I can give you is like, uh, we may have to quantify these words such as uh, positive, fantastic, confident, so we may have to quantify these these attributes some way. Only then we'll get to a good paper. Okay. So yeah, anyway, right. this is like uh, totally uh, off track, but just because I remembered it, I just thought I'll share with you. Okay. Anybody? Krishnakant Roy is the next person. Go ahead, Krishnakant. Good evening, Sami sir, and good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Krishnakant Roy. I actually teach economics uh, in Pune and I'm also a PhD scholar. So uh, I registered this course as a participant. And uh, the, the idea, the research idea which I'm working on currently is uh, ICTCL. I call it ICTCL. I mean, a phrase or a term I've, I'm using it because uh, what I find in the area in the Faculty of Humanities and Social Science, teachers struggle a lot to, uh, to make a system how students can collaborate and learn. So basically, uh, I'm trying to see, uh, especially in the area of Faculty of Humanities and Social Science or Economics, uh, what kind of collaborative strategies uh, teachers make uh, for better learning outcomes. So uh, ICT tech tools and techniques, what kind of tools and techniques they use, because I have seen my colleagues struggle a lot. I mean, uh, in, in terms of uh, how to promote collaboration among students. So that is the idea I'm working on. I have some basic concepts, ideas. I've reviewed some papers, uh, but yes, I am very open to learn more from the group. Great. Uh, so yeah, so you can see that the, the diversity is now expanding, right? Now we have English economics and uh, so many things. Great. Uh, go ahead. Uh, who was the person who who has not introduced himself or herself yet? Rakshita, yeah. Rakshita and then Shunika. Go ahead. 
and Shruti. Okay. Hello, good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone. I am Rakshita. Uh, I am an educator. I can say because I am not working anywhere. I whatever I do, I do by my own. I try to uh, uh, impart uh, whatever I learn uh, to as many kids as I can. I will say kids because uh, I am teaching to the students of at uh, five uh, grade or fifth grade or sixth grade. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, I worked as a lecturer in an engineering college also. But uh, uh, there was a uh, some uh, uh, gap after that. I started by my own work. Where uh, right now I am uh, teaching animation to my kids using Blender and uh, Scratch, and I started uh, teaching AR also and uh, VR using H. There is a uh, H Kids platform, so and I help. Is there any uh, anything that you can like share in one minute, like about what is one uh, interesting result you found out when you taught Blender to kids? Like what is the age group that you are teaching? That's fourth grade uh, student of uh, uh, it's an online uh, way I'm teaching and it, I want to share this. Uh, the student was in fourth grade and uh, we made a solar system in a uh, in a hardware form and uh, he uh, knows Blender because uh, okay. Blender was introduced in their school. Okay. So I helped him to connect the both things using QR code, and he represented that in their uh, science exhibition. And in his category, he won the first prize. Okay. So I really found this idea very interesting because uh, kids are very good when they uh, see the things visually. They learn it more beautifully, more uh, uh, easily when they th see anything visual information or visual learning. So I am trying to make uh, like this uh, using QR code the things which are easily available to them in a visual information, so that the not, uh, this education is also become interesting for them, and then they will not uh, they uh, sorry they can get, gain uh, knowledge easily. Okay, okay, fine, thanks. Welcome, sir. We have uh, Shruti Handa uh, from Ludhiana. Okay, go ahead. Good evening, everyone. I'm Shruti, and I'm participant in this course. And um, uh, my idea of research is uh, whether can educational chatbots act as a virtual mentor after the class or an online course that student has joined, so that it could understand the sentiment of the user's query and respond accordingly. Uh, like. Uh, uh, in order to enhance the learner experience or maybe to improve the scores of the students and whether we could also uh, incorporate active learning uh, in the chatbot so that uh, it could handle the queries that are off script so generally educational chatbots uh, they have scripted uh, they can handle the scripted queries and uh, they are not efficient to handle the queries that are off script so uh, that is my idea of research okay so yeah it's interesting to see that uh, have you already implemented a certain thing in your classroom or you no, want to not yet okay not yet but in the sense has it has it come up because of some implementation you saw somewhere or like how you how you came up to this point uh, like uh, it's like generally uh, after the class or maybe an online course like generally what i have felt like after the class uh, students generally whatsapp uh, like their queries to us when they reach home and we are answering their queries on whatsapp so if uh, we could uh, if uh, we could develop a chatbot that could handle their queries uh, generic queries like the, most of them are generic queries which can be easily automated that's what yes. you want yes okay so can we have okay yeah it's an interesting problem the question could be like whether students will message when they come to know that it's an automatic chatbot answering and not Shruti Madam answering. So probably I don't know their reaction, but but let's see. Uh, yeah, that would be a good point to see. Uh, yeah, who else is remaining? Shrunika? Shrunika? Yes, sir. I'm here. I'm here. I'll go. All right, all right. So I'm Shrunika. I'm from Madras. And right now with my... Um, 
co-author Natasha, who's also in the meeting. We are working on uh, an ethnographic study of discussion forum moderators in a one run of a um, learner-centric model MOOC that was run in uh, on NPTEL. So right now we're focusing on on community of practice, on uh, and how it impacts, whether it impacts. Um, the engagement and overall interest taken by the students in the forum. Um, that being said, my general interest is also uh, in my, because I'm a language teacher, I'm a French teacher. Uh, my general interest also lies in game-based learning and uh, developing, uh, using games to teach language uh, and other you know, technology tools to teach language. So that's a short note about me. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thanks. So, yeah, uh, we we also have Nandan who is uh, actually coordinating this entire activity, and uh, he's doing a lot of background work actually to put in uh, everything in place. Uh, so, Nandan, can we just uh, get on to the uh, slide maybe, and uh, maybe that time you can also. Uh, you can also then uh, okay let me ask you the question after i show the slide number two so have you enrolled even the uh, research buddies on the course now oh uh, yes So we will directly go to the reflection spot. Okay, why not? Why not play? Yes, so like the same thing. So I have a question about uh, what happened in the last week. So all of you will, yeah, go, go pick one. Yeah, okay, go ahead. One more. Ah. So, how much content have you gone through the week one uh, content which was uploaded? That's what I want all of you to put up on the chat. Uh, because I want to just get a feel of literally how much. So, even the, uh, I think the buddies were uh, added somewhere middle week, right? Uh, maybe yesterday or something. Uh, to the uh, tutorial, I must ask. Uh, when? All the when were the buddies added to the course? Uh, it's uh, two three days back. Two three days. Okay. So yeah. So my question to all of you now is like, what all have you seen on this week one content? You can start typing your answers. Forty percent. Okay. Two optional videos. Okay. Everything except two optional videos. Okay. Got it. You can write zero if you haven't seen anything. That's a perfectly valid answer. Forty-four percent. My God, I am. I am really not sure about how to figure out. <laughs> what is how to calculate forty-four percent? Sir, it actually shows the <laughs> platform shows the number that okay. the percentage is. <laughs> I found that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Sanam okay. video on what's not a research and what is a research. Okay. 50% through the video and structure of research paper, what referee seeks help a lot but cannot go through the worksheet completely. Okay. Yes, Surabhi. I think I am. Uh, Shriya has not joined today, right? She is one of the participants. Yeah, because we have received uh, submissions of uh, participants uh, for the activity that was given out uh, from five people, I suppose, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm, okay. So we got only five answers. Six answers. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven answers. Okay. Out of that, Arjun Prasad is one of the 
buddies okay buddies have you have you gone to the page and like seen things at least so i am able to summarize that others who are not writing have not seen that's like a deductive analysis i'm doing now <laughs> so um so which means that we will we we'll need more time for getting there 18% okay been i yes good um yeah <clears throat> we are certainly short of time and uh, in fact uh, i can also see uh, certain thing that uh, more we delay on on this part we will we lose our uh, timing for interaction with each other why we need buddies also to go through the material is because that would be a, a framework that we'll be using to write the research papers as well as to uh, submit the research papers to the conference because the uh, uh, the domain is going to be on edtech so people from varied backgrounds can go through this very crisp and very short material by the way the overall viewing time of the content is not more than 1 hour but the activity will take uh, a lot of time probably 2 to 3 hours for the activity part like the first activity and the assignment will take slightly more or more than that probably so having said that i think i will have the next question uh, maybe can you show the next question okay so who could be your collaborator actually uh so after going through the introductions and uh, various uh, uh domains and topics that you have heard so far i think it is interesting to see uh who you should approach so my suggestion is going to be now let us let us extend one more week for for this purpose because there is nobody who has seen 100% okay uh, i think yeah srudika has seen everything uh but apart from that i don't see anybody uh so let us do one thing uh but shunika have you submitted the assignment no sir unfortunately no okay. um yeah so there are that is the there is the kind of gap here that's okay see it's not a it's not a classroom as such like you have to have these things it's only important because otherwise it will be very hard for us to conclude in a paper so it's a it's a constructive alignment exercise it is not a uh, exploratory uh, thing uh, at one point obviously we are in a open uh, system here where we are not like bound by uh, any commitments but we are certainly bound by the deadlines of the conference and we are also bound to generate good research so we just don't want a run on mill work here so with these two constraints i think we should uh, put in some more effort now my suggestion is going to be that out of the people that you have heard today uh, find a collaborator and then probably discuss with him or her about how you want to go ahead about accessing content of the course and then discussing your uh, outline with them so that i want you to do and you just keep us informed during uh, your interaction by just dropping one single line or email that uh, i have interacted with so and so and we have started working on it that is good enough for us right nandan yeah so maybe i can uh, uh, add all the vendors uh, research buddies to the telegram group yeah you should you should yeah you should add all of them uh mm-hmm. yeah telegram is chosen so that it is like easy for uh, uh protecting your privacy of things but in case you want to interact over phone or something you can always write to them and ask them and all that so yeah here anybody who is okay to share their contacts and open to uh chatting on whatsapp and on that they can do it right away you can just start uh, sharing with everyone uh you can use chat also or whatever but uh or on telegram you can start writing messages to each other so you can add them because 
it has to go uh, as a as a dedicated project now so unless we get into that zone we probably don't have a step towards completion uh, do you all agree with this plan now do you have any uh, could you see any uh, collaborator uh, like potential collaborator okay. if you have then yeah this is the time that you can actually uh, start the process of interaction so all those who have okay with, uh, with the with sharing their phone numbers and all that they can do that right away whenever they can okay and uh, what we wanted to show is like but then proceed with caution for this so yeah um, nandan can you show the next slide yeah, and you can explain this also Yeah, so module two we already uploaded in the tutorial lemmas. Uh, so in the second week now onwards, um, you can so probably we can find a suitable uh, research buddies and you can initially you can finalize your research idea by discussing with the buddies. That would be the uh, initial task. Then uh, at the end of the second week, there will be another assignment that is study planning. So the study planning uh, will upload uh, by uh, 23rd, May 23rd, and you can start working on operating the study plan also. Uh, I hope uh, all other, so LEDs are, uh, you have gone through, it's already uploaded in the uh, total LMS. Yes, Samisa. Yeah, you can actually uh, go to the tutor LMS once again, just for sharing how does it look like now? This, yeah. this is the week two now that you can see. Yes. These have uh, actually one LED, uh, two LED, and three LED. Okay, and again, uh, the cumulative time for all three put together is around one hour. Uh, but we have additional reading material of another one hour gap. So that's yeah. the. Mm, so, if you look at it, I can understand uh, it could be daunting, but the moment you pair up or group with somebody, uh, I think it is going to be interesting. Uh, so, my suggestion is you can get serious about the um, activity and then we can meet uh, once again based on the uh, the progress that has happened, right? And then we can discuss. Yeah, Krishna Kant. And sir, I just want to make a suggestion. Uh, is it possible for uh, maybe Nandan to create a spreadsheet and give access to all of us and have four columns? One is name, another is maybe either your buddy or presenter, then maybe email ID and phone number, so that we can type. I mean, we can type and we can give our details, and then we can look for collaborators. I mean, that will be easy and. Another column yeah. just to I, research. I idea. just want to maybe take a poll on Telegram, maybe like oh, yeah. okay to share their contacts. Okay, if yeah. everyone's okay with that, then we already have a spreadsheet of that category. Okay. Because when we conduct we took the forms, we have con we have taken up uh, phone numbers of most of the people and they have okay. given us also. Some of okay. them have not given, so which was okay. Uh but uh we have them, we just don't want to share it without their uh, permissions. Okay. So let us conduct a survey, maybe a poll on Telegram. And if everyone is okay, we can just uh, post sure. it. And even if we uh, anonymize the phone number, we can find out people using their username. So so we can maybe we can share the username if somebody don't want to share their phone number. With the username, you can contact or a search but that option also is there yeah okay yeah i think we can figure out that just go yeah, to yeah. the diagram and check whether yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I can now, uh, as he mentioned, I can prepare a uh, table with the username linked to the to their uh, Telegram account. There could be also one thing like uh, yeah, mail IDs can do too, right? Yeah, yeah. You should be even to say mail IDs in addition to phone numbers or just mail IDs and no phone numbers. So okay. mail IDs so that uh, we can share whatever work yeah, we are no, doing it's, because it's, yeah yeah yeah. Really. yeah. See, the whole point is like there there could be an answer from somebody saying that okay I am okay to share my phone number and email ID with my buddy or my uh, any other collaborator but uh, may not be with the entire group. That's also fine. So we can just uh, give give out that. So yeah, I can see uh, JK has joined, and uh, so JK the the news is that we introduced the research buddies today, and we had a big round of introduction again, where people were uh, explaining their topics and areas of expertise and uh, interest. Uh, yes. which has led to an uh, option that uh, probably they will choose a collaborator uh, okay. or collaborators. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, now that that is what they are going to do. But the uh, the good news is that there would be many people there with overlapping ideas, and uh, the bad news is that uh, not many people have actually consumed the content on the. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Mess for the week one. Okay, we got some assignment submissions, uh, but some of them were uh, uh, like not complete. They were incomplete submissions. Some of them were really, really good. By the way, I should appreciate that. So maybe uh, uh, can you uh, can you just show the folder at least where these submissions are received? We can just see the names at least for as of now. We can in fact also discuss the. Uh, some of the good submissions because we read some of them. Okay, yeah. So we got from uh, KK Roy, Natasha, Shreya, Shruti, and Surbi. Uh, some of them were were really good, uh, and some of them were slightly incomplete. But we could see the effort put in. So actually, a round of applause for all of them who who worked through the thing. And yeah. uh, and submitted. Okay, that is really something commendable that I saw. Uh, the only thing is that uh, let us utilize this opportunity to to find the collaborators now, uh, so that we we'll have like uh, more force actually. So I did not yeah, want. To yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I think uh, the. I mean, the more, I mean, the greater the overlap, the more you should think of working together and trying to identify smaller portions. And uh, if there are two different contexts, uh, typically, I mean, uh, I'm expecting two different participants who have two different contexts. So if you examine a small portion in two different contexts, uh, uh, compared to trying to do a large job, I think uh, the comparison between two different contexts will have a lot more value and uh, there is a much better story to tell uh, compared to the the larger story and the larger story takes time that's that's what the other uh, aspect is to tell the larger story we need a little bit more time we need a little bit more effort uh, whereas when people collaborate and split the areas and are able to identify overlaps that they can work in it may actually turn out to be a good uh, Good thing in the entire uh, context of uh, writing a paper. So that's that's something that you can uh, keep in mind. Uh, but yeah, I mean, um, I had gone through a couple of a uh, couple of submissions uh, that uh, had come today morning till today morning. So yeah, I mean, indeed, a very good effort by all those who submitted. Uh, uh, Nandan tells me that there are more people who are yet to submit. Uh, my recommendation to all of them is. Uh, uh, do not, uh, uh, yeah, take this opportunity as a, I mean, think of this as a wake up call. Uh, uh, it's not easy. Writing a paper or writing an idea is not an easy process. It takes time. <laughs> but take this as a wake up call. Excuse me. Yeah, 
take this as a wake up call and try to complete the uh, idea proposal in the next couple of days i think if you are able to do it it also shows your buddies that okay at least uh, this person is willing to put in an effort and that's that's the more important part uh, in in this workshop yeah back to you uh, sam yeah so um, i think we are just uh, waiting for your uh, input section and then yeah. we can take a call on that uh, so uh, i i needed to understand what is the major difficulty that uh, participants are facing in consuming content i mean uh, okay good i know it's not uh, it's not uh, so straight forward but uh, yeah uh, krishna kant roy uh, if you could yeah yeah uh, thank you jay krishnan for asking this question i i thought i'll just tell you maybe towards the end of the meeting but yeah so i'll tell you uh, the design of the course is wonderful i mean i have not seen these kind of courses like how to write a paper and step by step very only thing is that the assignments are too lengthy for yeah but it has to be rigorous i can understand but the selection of the papers where i have some suggestion that those two papers paper 1 or paper 2 are tech very technical paper for engineering students i come from a very uh, you can say that social science background where the moment i get those engineering terms and all that my interest loses so okay. i restrict myself to at the max introduction then i don't feel like going so if it is possible for you to maybe add some papers which are not too technical or engineering based maybe uh, some other uh, edtech paper something which is very easy to understand that is just a suggestion yeah point. it's a good point actually and couple of answer raised after that that's a good point let us see uh, we'll make a note of that and we we'll just but sir the course is wonderful i mean i have started today morning and i'm able to complete 40 50% but it's wonderful i i, I and i want to suggest you to start a mooc of this course i mean that's <laughs> that will be wonderful so it's very so it's good a, it's a it's a toned down yeah, version of the research yeah. methods course that is precisely uh, uh, yeah precisely my point actually we had a long debate about this and again i want to bring it here when now many people are uh, there even now some of them have left but still i would like to remind this thing see there are two ways of it uh, one is one is education and other is application okay so we are trying to merge Uh, the application so much so that this should be a result outcome based course rather than learning how to how to write a research paper or how to uh, how to absorb a research paper or how to study a research paper good research paper bad research paper. so we are actually doing it it's a learning by doing example so my uh, our idea is that uh, most of the time when we conduct such a course or a mooc there are lot of people like for example i am very uh, kind of not very happy to say that but designing learner centric mooc is a very popular course and lot of people have enrolled for it like uh, if i add up all the numbers for last 5 years more than uh, maybe uh, 8000 learners have uh, like teachers have enrolled for this on an average uh, 2500 maybe per year uh, so but how many people have actually come up with a mooc whenever they were given a chance or how many people have created even a led Uh, which has a uh, insert into that is it 10% 20% 30% that number is what bothers uh, us actually together like jk and me are on the same page on that so if we see a change in in that part like when uh, people can actually create leds rather than monologue videos and have expressions for that would be a real success story for lcm course is what i uh, we believe in similarly knowing how is how is good research paper written and what is the hallmark of a good paper is good to learn but actually writing a good paper would be much more fruitful as a outcome is what we are like so therefore we are trying to connect that both things together here and see to it if we can actually uh, do a example of so many people attended this and actually so many papers came out of this so we are we are uh, maybe slightly bullish on uh, on the paper writing part at the same time as we are on the uh, this and therefore we are we are trying to build it uh, build it around the community so that we will see that maybe collaboration can be a good idea what uh, 
you yeah. know so the uniqueness of this course is that most uh, if you if you just type how to write an academic paper you will find lot of material okay. even research paper also but no courses actually uh, handhold you step by step yeah. so this is this is the uniqueness of this course and i think yeah um, i mean today onwards i will be very serious about this course and i'll follow the assignments and everything uh, very meticulous but yeah okay, so <laughs> i'm not done uh, in a very yeah, meticulous so, way something that you should understand this is a very toned down version of a a slightly more rigorous workshop that we did 10 years back <laughs> we had to i mean we were uh, debating and uh, see even in the options if you see i don't think uh, uh, the ipt can be filled that easily i mean start to start of idea proposal is supposed to be the easiest of the lot but see that itself there are like uh, seven questions that you have to answer even before finalizing your idea and uh, i mean by the time you end up with it something that we are sure if you have done a good job of it then uh, i mean uh, we don't have we just have to help you in <laughs> doing the study yeah yeah in fact i got a mail at 3 am from ganesh saying that sir the course is great but the assignment i can realize that i will need at least four or five days to just plan how to solve this assignment so yeah i get that point and that is where i think the collaboration is the only solution for it unless you discuss with somebody you will not be able to uh, come up with it. because in isolation you don't know how many ideas you cancel on your own saying that oh no Correct. this sentence is bad i should not do this this will be asked with so many questions so this happens if i have to overcome this problem i have to write and immediately share with somebody and only then i think so finding your collaborators uh, is is a very important step i think in fact even uh, consuming the course can happen in a collaborative manner like you watch the videos separately but then again have a meeting or a call and discuss like what what you learned from it like what was the problem in that so excellent example could be even if it is engineering paper you just uh, collaborate with a guy from engineering domain and try to understand what is this because at the end of the day we want to develop that that vision for each and every person that it's there okay okay i have natasha's hand raised for a long time so before she gets like uh, really uh, pain for the raise of hand <laughs> maybe we'll ask her she's not there oh, no no i'm sorry i'm sorry i uh, yes uh, i'm sorry i couldn't uh, unmute or contribute earlier but i've gone i've heard uh, the entire session uh, so this thing i was struggling with in the form is basically see we need to choose three papers and now considering like all of the criteria that we have for selection of a good paper uh, it's just not easy to select three papers <laughs> and then uh later on we need to analyze the papers right you can select five ha huh, but even even that then later on it's like you are uh, you deep dive into each paper and for me uh, that is something that i'm still struggling with like to be able to like uh, pull things up from there synthesize the paper and add, like you know question five onwards so i have yeah, left yeah. I, part I, of that we discussed this and uh, i i think the key lies in collaboration so hmm. that is my very frank opinion because i i have also struggled because when i was taking the course uh, i was in the same boat as uh, what kk said and i could not understand the thing about the engineering papers which were there and but yeah the only way i solved it was classmates and we just had to have maybe lot of late night sessions <laughs> and uh, that that's where we we solved it so yeah um, we'll try we'll try to give more input so that's why we have added all these edtech students also to this group so that you can actually pick them up for some discussions right yeah so a uh, couple of uh, nandan what might be useful is let us post some quick techniques on uh, doing lit review or lit uh, survey i think that's that is going to be a key for i mean that's going to be a struggling point i i was mentioning this to Uh, all the research buddies today morning that uh, the biggest struggle that uh, novais teacher is going to face is how do i know that the paper i selected is correct or not and and so this is a very yeah 
So see, there is a so in the module one there was a LXT about tips on literature review that we already given in the module one. No, but I think what is more problematic is I think they are looking for good papers from uh, from the pool. So how do you select good papers through literature research? Now that we don't have a, a what do you say a straightforward steps, right? So I mean some tips that I mean something that I have seen is look for the good journals like Computers and Education, uh, BJET. Uh, uh, all the there are some popular journals in educational uh, technology where these kind of works come and look for the most cited authors in that i mean work done by most cited authors more or less tend to come in a good paper category so that is something that you can actually use as a initial metric but again see uh, i mean it uh, it's it's not a blanket rule i mean uh, very good authors can also have bad papers so I mean, you should not just imagine that good uh, always authors would write good papers. But uh, ninety percent of the time, what they try to do is that there is a coherent uh, idea throughout the paper. I think that's what they try to do. And especially when you want to try uh, particular technologies and other things, something that you have to look for is whoever has published in that area. Maybe look at that person's profile and see the area that they are uh, currently working in. That would give you an idea of okay who are the others uh, who are the others he has collaborated with who are his phd students so those kind of things can actually lead you to uh, good papers and good journals i think that's that's one more uh, i mean what do you say it's not so easy but a <laughs> shortcut for uh, identifying good papers uh, keyword search definitely is going to give you a hit. Uh, any of the databases, uh, Google Scholar, Scopus, uh, all those places, you put your keywords. Understand what the keywords would be from your study and then uh, put those in Google Scholar to see the most recent and the most. Uh, yeah, I think uh, things that you have to look for is uh, uh, review papers. Review papers are one good way of look, uh, getting um what do you say good uh, suggestions and uh, another thing that you have to look for is uh, if you are looking for journal papers the way in which they get constructed is very different compared to conference papers conference papers have a higher thing about novelty or uh, novelty of either the idea or any of the uh, context or of the method uh, whereas uh, uh, if you yeah so if you have a journal paper journal papers more often talk about rigorousness of the methods and how how systematically have you actually tried to uh, validate the argument that you are putting in i think that's what journal papers look at so when you select papers also have this in your mind uh, while selecting papers i think the four di uh, the multiple dimensions that a reviewer looks for you have already seen uh, and uh, this this will help you. I mean, when you want to look for most recent thing, uh, uh, look for conference papers. If you want for rigorousness, look for journal papers. Or more theoretical uh, ideas, look for journal papers. Yeah, Ganesh. Good evening, sir. I have a question. Huh. So, uh... Right now, what I'm doing is I have developed a tool for teachers to write LED scripts. Mm. Uh, so for the uh, literature review part, uh, I'm trying to find a relevant study where somebody has developed a tool for teachers to write the scripts. And I could not find a single study. Uh, no, so I think the way you have to look for is annotations. Mm -hmm. How do you annotate? How do you uh, annotation storyboarding? These are the keywords that you will have to look for because if you exactly look for teachers creating scripts, I mean, they would not use that terminology. So mm -hmm. see, annotations are good because in video annotations are very popular. So uh, existing pre-recorded video, how do I annotate it? Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, there could be students annotating it. There would be experts annotating it. So there are various ways in which this annotation happen, or it could be auto annotation generated. Right now, mm -hmm. uh, that is post production. What you are looking for is pre-production. Yes. So pre-production, okay. So post-production, there are these 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 ideas. In pre-production, there is storyboarding. Uh, there could be any other. I mean, uh, in terms of video creation techniques, also uh, something could be 
talked about. So you have to uh, look at all the different uh, aspects. Um, uh, so I mean, all other keywords that are associated to scripting. It is not exactly scripting. Scripting is more from the film or the uh, I mean the multimedia background. That word comes from that background. Whereas uh, uh, the academic notation would be uh, uh, would be ideally it could be uh, storyboarding. Mm -hmm. uh, post production, you can think of even annotations uh, for that matter. Okay, I'll try doing that. So thank you. Yeah. Anyone having doubts on their related work? So a uh, couple more things that you have to look at. I think uh, while you are talking to uh, your research buddies itself. Uh, something that is very explicit that you're doing is you're doing some kind of boundary crossing. So boundary crossing means you are majorly a practitioner and you are now trying to cross the boundary between practitioner and researcher. And you're not expert researcher, but you are planning to move towards that direction. So when you are doing this boundary crossing, a typical problem that you would observe is you would still think of the problem from a practitioner's perspective, not from uh, not so objectively from a researcher's perspective. From a researcher's perspective, uh, there is a core argument that you have to either prove, disprove, or uh, validate, whatever you want to say. See, it's, it's more objective. There is it's a lot meta when it comes to. So I'll I'll take uh, uh, Ganesh's research as an example because all of you heard it. So how can a teacher do better scripting, right? How how does a teacher do better scripting? Are there tools for it? So uh, things, but when you think of it as a practitioner, your problem would be that teachers are unable to design good lessons. So let me give them a tool that helps them design it. It could be PowerPoints. It could, I mean, they, they will talk of it from very practical, I mean, very useful aspect. So there is a chemistry teacher. I teach them how to do better uh, slide, uh, slide creation using PowerPoint, right? Uh, now, slide creation automatically leads to better flow in the sequence uh, in the classroom. And the teacher can draw on their own background knowledge and then connect to the slide points and uh, do a uh, complete uh, lecture or whatever, uh, a lecture uh, uh, demonstration, uh, lecture slash demonstration uh, in the class. Now. Uh, so when you look at as a practitioner, you, you are only worried about creating that slide deck. Uh, I mean, yeah, what, what that slide deck is. But when you're moving as a researcher, something that is more important, uh, the question is, yeah, uh, is slide deck the appropriate mechanism? What kind of pointers should I give? I mean, is it is there a queue? Uh, is there a section for a queue? Or is there a section for uh, uh, key material? How does the structure help the teacher in delivery? So here you're not looking at, at it as a person who is creating slide or person who is creating a tool that uh, uh, arranges the slide. Rather, you are more objectively looking at it as a person who is worried about the larger problem. The larger problem being teachers are unable to do a good job of instructional delivery. Right. I mean, that's that's the goal that you are looking at, not not specifically at a slide, not specifically at. Uh, I mean, all of these become instantiations of your problem solving technique. Uh, so you should you should understand that there is a difference between the instantiation and the larger idea. The larger idea is what you should be striving for. Right. In research. OK, how will a person uh, so it could be the uh, the research could tell you that appropriate cues at the uh, cues during this point of time can help the teacher in delivering much better. Now that cues could be delivered either in the slide as a uh, uh, animation, the cues will come just pop up, or it could be some other mechanism. I mean, maybe it could be a chatbot who is who is listening to the voice that is happening and it is just putting up chat prompts, now talk about this, now talk about this. Uh, why, I mean, you said this, then why don't you talk about 
uh, why are you not talking about this aspect? I mean, it could be a chatbot. So, uh, I mean, so for in both the cases, uh, the instantiation of helping the teacher is very different. But if you look at it from an abstract, it's still queuing the teacher to to that particular context through some questions. So how can how can teachers be provided with better questions while they are delivering so that they can then adjust the lectures more appropriately and uh, uh, deliver a good job, right? I mean, so this is the stance that a researcher should take. They're not worried about the specific tool. They're not worried about the specific methodology. For, for them, that tool or methodology, it just helps to solve that contextual problem. But as a researcher, you are thinking now about the context and trying to generalize it. So this, these two hats you will have to wear. At the time of implementation, you will wear the teacher's hat. But at, after the implementation or before and both after and before the implementation, you are wearing the researcher's hat. So this is, I mean, this is going to be slightly tricky. But uh, I think be rest assured, I mean, everyone goes through this journey. I mean, any any researcher, if you see, they've all gone through this journey to, to I mean, they go between, they go back and forth between these two phases. Uh, and it is this boundary crossings, multiple boundary crossings that helps in improving your repertoire and uh, do a much better job of uh, either teaching or doing research. I think uh, both get served uh, through this process. Yeah, uh, any uh, questions, anyone? I think we are uh, coming towards the end of the session. So any specific questions you have, any specific things that you want to clarify? Uh, any changes that you need? Uh, so in the upcoming week, we are going to release multiple LXTs or uh, these are like optional. So whichever you feel more comfortable with, go ahead and look at it. Uh, Nandan, it's going to be released tomorrow, right? Or is uh, it actually, actually uh, other than the assignment to all other LXTs are uh, released yeah. last week itself. And sure. also, so, um, I can I can reopen assignment one for uh, one more one more week so that yeah, it would be good. Yeah, 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 it would yeah, be good for be good. yeah, it would be good for. I mean, if you want to re-upload or uh, redo the things, that would be a nice opportunity. And those people who have not yet started, I think uh, you can use this opportunity. Make sure that you put in the effort and uh, submit uh, it uh, within a day. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see Natasha's hand raised. Yes. Yes, Natasha. Yeah. Sir, um, would it be possible to have, uh, you know, to see a template that is sort of filled uh, just so that we could see if there is a research paper that's already done and like the draft of it within the template? If possible. We should be, we should be having it, uh, right, Nandan? I mean, one of our uh, PhD uh, students... I remember we used to have it earlier. Uh, let me figure out. I think uh, there is one that we have actually filled it. I think couples research problem. We had actually done this exercise. You may want to check the old archive resources and we have actually the IPT filled in it. IPT and SPT has been filled in that. Yeah, I think that IPT structure was some different, I guess. No, no I, I think it's okay. I, I think any of the structure, they just have to see the questions and it being addressed. Also, uh, uh, so I, I remember Lakshmi had a comic uh, strip based uh, networking study. I think she has filled both IPT and SPT. Okay, let me check. Yeah, or we can ask Lakshmi also. So, uh, Natasha, in the next uh, couple of days, we will get these resources uploaded uh, uh, in the uh, or uh, either in a drive or in the portal, we'll get it uploaded. Okay, sir. Uh, so I have another, like, it's probably a really basic question, but I'm still going to ask because it's something that I'm struggling with. So say, for instance, there is a, uh, there is sort of an intervention that's done in a course or in a MOOC. Uh, and that is something either done by, uh, it could be partly by the instructor, but it could also be by the learners or the participants. Now, will mm -hmm. like 
I I can't see how this will be an instructional strategy. But at the same time, in certain things, I'm like, yeah, it will fall under that. But at the same, like we have three criteria, right? When we are filling the dimensions, there's instructional strategy, there is a development of a tool, and the third one is for for analysis of data. So currently, I feel for two things, like instructional strategies and for analysis of data. So I don't know. It's just. Okay, so I mean, yeah. Uh, see, I think uh, a couple of things. I mean, if you look at those questions, uh, for somebody who has already read about research and is doing research, those are very, I mean, very confusing questions because you know something about it already. So uh, typically, when we do with teachers, they would never have tried something. Hence, it becomes clear. I mean, even collaborative activities. can or they will also put it under instructional strategies right hmm. so hmm. yeah don't go by the definition of the word instructional strategy if you think uh, there is there is certain things that the instructor or i mean so the so think of instructor as more than one member right it hmm. could be instructor it could be peer it could be a support staff hmm. i mean i don't know depending on the structure or it could be a ta for that matter right hmm. so all of them are instructors as well as some of them are even learners right mm. so you should you should take that stance to instructional strategy when you are uh, adopting it yeah, you don't have to strictly say that this is an instructional strategy because okay. many okay. times when you read research papers each of the research paper will call it different way they mm. someone will say a collaborative uh, discourse or uh, someone else will say so uh, i mean uh, student Uh, driven socratic question hmm. when so, socratic question basically the teacher is supposed to ask right but hmm. what about student driven socratic question so who hmm. is who is i mean so uh, those terminologies you will see differently in different papers and uh, the best thing that has to be adopted i mean uh, for your paper when you write the paper you just have to define it once saying hmm. that this is what i mean by this strategy right you you may not exactly say it as instructional strategy you may not exactly say it as uh, a collaborative strategy but you will broadly put it as a teaching learning strategy right okay. i think uh, think of it as teaching learning strategy rather than instructional strategy at that point okay okay yes makes sense okay thank you yeah, so uh, surabhi has asked a nice question and uh, i hope uh, yeah one of you could answer it uh, rather than me saying it uh, can you decode leds lxts lpds uh once because surbhi has never heard that term before can one of you yeah. just uh, yes chip in and uh, provide yes. the gyan yeah <clears throat> okay i'll uh, because uh, we are we call it uh, we are also ambassador of this lcm model <laughs> so um, including ganesh natasha we have taken a lot of sessions with in various universities using these terms so i'll start with led so led is uh, learning dialogues the video you watch that is led it has some features like reflection spot and all that lxt is learning exten extension trajectories the resources what you use uh, for your i mean whatever you are learning lbd is learning by doing these are activities and another there is another also which you have not written but i'll say because it's four quadrant uh, that is called as lxi so uh, learning uh, extension uh, learning uh, interactions so basically this is called discussion forum so i've given the link also you can explore and you can get all the details about this lcm model which has these four aspects uh, of uh, uh, the term you have asked actually yes sir thank you sir yeah you can do the course also i mean by yes, nptl yeah so this is my first course actually i'm i've got enrolled in and i'm working on the moocs so i'm just uh, learning from the scratch so <laughs> i didn't know about the terms thank yeah, you this is fantastic course actually yeah yeah thank you yeah thanks thanks krishna uh so thank you Uh, yeah so in general see couple of things over the next couple of days some things that you can expect from us is uh, each of you would be paired with either one or more uh, research mentees uh, or research buddies from our site so these people have prior experience of research uh, they have also seen your idea basically what they are more familiar with is that systematic process of uh, asking questions and looking at the valid 
validity of claims and all those things so uh, i think where we are uh, i mean what we are hoping is uh, over a week they will spend up at least 3 to 4 hours with you uh, they will clarify your basic questions uh, uh, they will help you in refining your idea uh, so uh, feel free to connect with them schedule uh, uh, sessions with them uh, over the week based on both your and their convenience and uh, spend uh, time in distilling the ideas a little bit more because next you will be doing um, uh, study planning template so which is a little more harder one and uh, see typically uh, if you actually look at those templates uh, it, it is it takes a minimum of 6 to 7 days to work on it because it takes uh, there is a there are a lot of iterations that you have to do and what is more important is at this time i mean when you are whenever you are iterating you need another person or a buddy to bounce off uh, questions bounce off ideas uh, look at it more more uh, reflectively and that's that's the whole uh, purpose of having research buddies with you so they they will be helping you uh, in refining your ideas and planning your study a little bit better okay so this this is what uh, we hope uh, yeah will be coming uh, in the days uh, uh, in the subsequent weeks and uh, once the ideas uh, study planning template is done in june i think you will from june you will have extensive interactions with them uh, we might set up these uh, meetings now the frequency will reduce it will be once in two weeks or something like that where everyone comes in uh, so those would be more of pointers looking at the larger uh, uh, issues, uh, challenges faced, etc. And it would also be like a debriefing session uh, to know where you are, track where you are, understand uh, how you are heading, how close you are to a paper. These kind of things will come uh, in uh, in the days uh, in in the month of June. Okay. So this is uh, I hope all of you got benefit of this session uh, as Samir said if you want to uh, collaborate at this point if you think uh, there are overlapping areas where you can work uh, together that is another nice thing uh, so go ahead but uh, the immediate point is make sure that you look at the idea proposal and refine it and upload in the coming days whoever has not done it uh, the people who have done it and has not been able to look at the other dimensions, this would be a right time to start working on other dimensions so that by the time the research buddies are assigned, you can share a much more better version of the IPT to them and the discussions can take off from them. Okay. Okay. So I think uh, it's eight over here. Uh, Nandan, I think. Uh, we can formally close uh, the session now so you can stop the recording if anybody wants to ask uh, any questions we'll be available for another five ten minutes over here yeah thanks all i think uh, i mean whoever uh, 